Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos where we go over common implementations Cloud Connects does in their clients' orgs. This first use case will be on first touch campaign and last touch campaign. What that is, is these four fields. First touch campaign gives you the first campaign the lead is assigned to, along with the date it was assigned. Last touch campaign is the last field that the campaign is assigned to, along with the date that it was assigned. This is useful when you just want to find out more about the effectiveness of your campaigns. And you can do that through reporting on these fields. First thing you need to do when implementing this is create these four fields. First touch campaign is a lookup relationship on campaigns. First touch date is just a date field. And last touch campaign is a lookup relationship on campaigns. And last touch date is also a date. Uh, if you don't know how to make those fields or add it to your page layout, uh, we have two videos, one just how to create a custom field, and then one that's specifically for lookup and master detail relationships. Um, so now you have your fields, but we need them to populate every time that you add this lead to a new campaign. So to do that, we create a flow. So to create a flow, we go to setup. Go to flows and I'll show you the completed flow. So it's a record triggered flow. It looks like this. We want it to trigger every time a record is created and after the record is saved. And you want the trigger object to be campaign members with no condition requirements. Um, the idea being that when a campaign member is created, that's a junction object between the lead and the campaign. So that marks the beginning of the lead being added to the campaign. Um, the first thing you need to do uh, is get the lead. So get the object lead, just get element. I'm gonna drag in elements, they're all over here. Get element is a decision element. And these are update elements. Just drag them in. Um, so yeah, so you, you get the lead from the campaign member, which will show up in record. So you just type in record and then go to lead. And you will get the first touch campaign. And you choose the fields and let Salesforce do the rest. The reason we got the first touch campaign from the lead uh, is to see if we need to update it. Because if it's already there, that means the lead was already assigned to a campaign, so we don't need to update it. We'll just update last touch. Uh, and if it isn't filled in, we'll fill up, we'll fill in first touch and last touch. Um, to see if it's filled in, just go to this decision element. And I just labeled it yes for when you need to add first touch. Uh, first touch, you just get go to get lead. That's from our get lead object. And get first, first touch campaign is null true. So when it is null, it goes down this path. And when it's not null, so the default it goes down this path. Um, so these are basically the same. One updating first touch, one updating last touch. So you update the lead object, same as the get element. Um, you use the ID to find it. Um, I use the ID from the get element itself, but you can use record lead ID again, if you want to. Um, and then you just update first touch campaign with the campaign from the campaign member and the first touch date you set to the current date. To get current date, you can just go to flow and then current date. 
And then this update element is the same thing, um, except for, for updating last touch. So last touch is always updated because you're whenever you're adding a new campaign, that's the most recent, but first touch is only updated if it's blank. And that's it. So you can just activate your flow and refresh this page. And then I'll show you really quick. I have to remove it because I'm using all the active campaigns, but I'll just remove it from this campaign. And then go to campaign history, add to campaign, save. Now if we go back to the lead, the fields will be updated after you refresh the page with the most recent date and the campaign you just added it to. Uh, the first touch campaign won't be updated or the first touch date. Um, it just happens to be the same campaign because that was the first campaign I added it to. Um, so moving forward, your fields will work. Uh, the only problem is if this is a org you're just jumping into, you're gonna already have leads with, that have been assigned to campaigns and these fields won't be filled in. It'll only be filled in for new campaign members that are added. So to backdate this process, we can import and export a report on campaign members. Uh, to do this, just go to the reports. And I have this report. So you group by the related record ID, which will be the lead ID. And you have the campaign ID. So you know what campaign you're assigning as the first touch campaign or last touch campaign. And then you get the member first associated date. So you know which date to assign the first touch date or last touch date. Uh, the only filter, you go to all campaigns, um, start updating everything in the org, and you just need related record, starts with 00Q, which will filter out for when related record ID only equals a lead, because it can also equal a contact, but we don't want it to update contacts. Um, so now that you have this report, You can sort by the campaign, by the member first associated date. Um, if you go by ascending, you'll get the oldest at the top. And if you go by descending, you'll get the newest at the top. So first touch, last touch. Um, so you'll export it twice to update each set of fields, first touch or last touch individually. Um, the way I do it is just export into Google Sheets and then I remove duplicates. Uh, and when you do that, it just leaves the topmost row of the group. So the reason I sort first is because it'll leave the top and I know the top is either the, the most recent or the oldest, depending on how I sort it. Um, so I'll show you that really quick. Export. You export it to CSV. Once you're in Google Sheets, to get your uh, file in here, just go to File, Import, Upload. Select File from your device. Um, I'm going to replace the current spreadsheet because it's a blank spreadsheet. Um, and now we have all our stuff. And then to remove duplicates in Google Sheets, you can also do this in Excel. Uh, this is just the way I do it. Um, I go to data, remove duplicates, data as a header, and then we want to analyze based on the related record ID because that's what we group by. So three duplicates are removed, one unique row remains. And this is the um, first touch campaign because we sorted by ascending. Um, so you can just export this, download, 
uh, current sheet CSV and then you can either use data loader or data import wizard let's use data import wizard launch wizard leads update existing records and we want to match leads by the salesforce.com ID and then we bring in the export we just downloaded from Google sheets next and then campaign ID you want to map to first touch or last touch depending on what you sorted by so I did first touch campaign Number first associated date would be first touch date for me. And then related record ID is the ID I'm using to find the lead. So salesforce.com ID. And next, start import. Um, I know this is a, a small example, but it hopefully it gives you the ID. The idea. This is just a sandbox where we don't have a lot of leads. Um but yeah, so that updated first touch. So you get last touch, you lose sort by descending and then repeat the same steps. And then all of your data will be backdated into these fields. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let us know what you think in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more Salesforce cloud tips and tricks. Also, check the link in the description to subscribe to our Connex newsletter where we curate the latest and greatest cloud content to help you become more effective and more aware of the tech that can help your business scale efficiently. Finally, if you need some support for a project or want to bounce some ideas off us, head over to our website and let us know how we can help. Thanks again for listening.